The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Greetings from the Journal of Health and Healing, sponsored by Wildwood Lifestyle Center and Hospital. Our topic today is walking is the winner. Have you heard it said, nothing can take the place of walking? Why is this so? What is going on? This problem of the right way to exercise is greatly illuminated by a series of articles in the most prestigious medical journal in the world. I refer precisely to New England Journal of Medicine, 2 December 1993, in which more than 2,000 people were studied. And here's what they found. In Boston and in Augsburg, Germany, as reported in this famous journal, they found out that within 60 minutes of overexertion, you have about 25,000 extra deaths in the United States due to heart attacks. How does this work? It works by triggering platelets. Now, if this represents a red blood cell in the body, we should have uh, five million of these in each uh, cubic millimeter of blood. And this carries oxygen to the body and carbon dioxide back from the body to keep us alive. Now, a platelet, instead of being this big, a platelet would be only two microns, like that. <clears throat> and it's a floating band-aid. And the job of this platelet is to keep you from bleeding to death when you cut yourself. But, in overexertion, these platelets get sticky so that instead of having those negative charges, electrical charges all around the platelet, to keep them apart, like this. Remember from physics that like charges repel. So that in overexertion, these get messed up such that the stress hormones like adrenaline and such will make these plates sticky, not only to themselves, but to the lining of the coronary artery so that you get platelet triggering of clots. And this is what kills the people. And here's what these famous studies found. That when 60 minutes of overexertion, you have twice as many heart attacks within 60 minutes of overexertion. If you're in excellent shape, like exercising five or more times a week, but if you're just a weekender, then you have 120 times the risk. because of these platelets you see are very delicate and uh, they really can make trouble with overexertion. Now, how do we define overexertion? Now this may be a little technical, but we need to explain this for two reasons. One, for those of you who would be interested and who need to know 
and also to convey to the idea that this is not psychological guesswork by a far stretch. Uh, the unit of exercise intensity that is commonly used in exercise physiology is the MET. One MET, one metabolic equivalent. One MET equals three and a half milliliters of oxygen, 3.5 milliliters of oxygen for each kilogram of body weight for each minute. That's the technical side of it. Okay, now let's make this very simple and understandable. This means when you're laying down out of stress, just relaxing, laying down, you have one met. When you're sitting up, two mets. When you're moving around, three mets. When you're walking slowly, four mets. When you're taking a brisk early morning tonic walk, moving right along, three and a half, four miles an hour, or even a little more, this would be five mets. Five nets, brisk walking. Now here's where we get into trouble with the ordinary normal person. Six mets is over the line. Six mets. Excuse the small letters right there. You get the idea. Six mets. Six mets is too much. And in this case, there's not enough blood flow to the liver and spleen so the platelets keep cleaned up. So the platelets get sticky, you see, and clumpy and adhesive. And they tend to stick to the plaques in the coronary artery or in the brain or in some other crucial spot uh, and make big trouble. Now, what kind of exercise is six minutes or more? Well, here's what six minute exercise is. We'll clear the side of this board and I'll give you a list. And we can understand in this lecture, this day, why moderation in exercise is a life and death issue. One, jogging is six minutes. Competitive tennis, competitive sports, as far as physiology goes. Uh, competitive sports um, are bad news on platelets um, and a lot of other parts of the body. And if you get a hold of the monograph, Longevity of Athletes, you will find out that athletes do very poorly in longevity. I'll admit statistically, there is a bias problem of what is called bias of sampling, a sampling error, because Ivy League athletes are a select group um, because you don't become a competitive athlete unless you have a high order of fitness. Nonetheless, even with these genetic and uh, behavioral and environmental advantages, they still don't live very well. I think you'll find that steady, hard-working farmers do as well or better. Uh, so that competitive sports are unphysiological for the blood. They build glamorous muscles and glamorous skills. But as far as balancing the circulation and lifting the immune system, this is another thing. You perhaps know that within two weeks of a marathon, the runners of a marathon have such weakened immune systems that they're sitting ducks for virus, cold, influenza, or whatever bugs are flying in their local environments. So competitive sports really is not the way to go for abundant living or to help the body. 
competitive tennis, competitive basketball, pushing a car out of the snow. It's not just sports. Trying to push a car out of the snow all by yourself in which you pant. Panting is a signal of overexertion. Sweating is just fine, but not this panting business. That's another matter. All right, so what are we saying? We are saying that according to the New England Journal of Medicine, first lead article from Boston, second article from Augsburg, Germany, first editorial in five letters, all in one issue of the New England Journal of Medicine, to December 93, clearly show that immoderate exercise is a killer. Okay, now what about walking? In the last couple of weeks, New England Journal of Medicine has come out with another article, and they have shown that people who walk more than one mile a day cut heart attacks in half. And this fits with the earlier work of Professor Morris of London, who showed as little as 15 minutes of walking a day will cut down heart events very nicely. Uh, now, what about the physiology of walking? Why is it so good? What does it do to uh, bless the body? Well, the answer is plenty. First, let's turn out, start out with the circulation. Every step you take lifts two ounces of blood from the feet up to the body. This is called the muscle pump. And here's the way that works. You have muscles in the body like this. And the creator has so beautifully designed the body that the veins coming back to the heart go between the muscles, like this. And healthy veins have valves in them pointing towards the heart, such that when, when you take a step and the muscles get bigger and bulge, they squeeze the vein nicely. This shuts the back door, opens the front door, and the blood is lifted two ounces per step. And notice how that adds up. Two, four, six, one cup. Two, four, six, one pint. No wonder that uh, Paul Dudley White, President Eisenhower's private heart specialist from Boston, he suggests that about a third of the work of moving the blood through the whole body can be done by the muscles, the skeletal muscles, using the system. So as you walk, you are cleansing the tissues, you're moving the stagnant blood and stagnant platelets from the um, side branches, it's technically called littoral circulation. You're moving stagnant blood out into the mainstream, back to the lungs for purification, back to the liver for chemical uh, detoxifying and cleansing and monitoring, back to the spleen where platelets are monitored and if they aren't in good enough shape to really face the turbulence of real circulatory life, the platelets will be locked up and if they can't be cleaned up, they are disassembled and their, their parts are recycled into new platelets, you see, that won't give you trouble. And you see, and people in this modern helter-skelter society, they really aren't aware of the fact that overexertion puts the platelets at risk for triggering clots. This is why in the New England Journal of Medicine they use the term triggering of clots with this overexertion business. So, walking operates the muscle pump with every step you take. Number two, walking <clears throat> balances the circulation. 
balance. Now this is a rich idea indeed. In our computer-oriented society, we spend so much time sitting down, playing games, watching television, doing cerebral or very sedentary things that much of the body doesn't get its share of blood. When we walk, we balance the scene. So that the blood goes all over the body. And this tends to prevent headaches. This tends to draw the blood away from the congested internal organs, away from the reproductive organs in ladies. This is very important. Away from the viscera of the abdomen and away from the lungs in a balancing sense so that walking is a winner for balancing the circulation and at the same time it allows such good blood flow that the liver stays up to date. Now I had the privilege of teaching exercise physiology for some years at, at Loma Linda University and uh, if you study deeply into exercise physiology, you learn that in over-exercise, the clearance of, for instance, Rose Bengal clearance in the liver is compromised when you overexert. So what? It means this, that the blood will be cleaner and purer if you're moderate in your exercise if you're study about it. Another little item is this. If you'll study the stomach physiology, you will learn that in a moderate exercise, the lining of the stomach doesn't have enough oxygen, enough blood flow. But you see in walking, walking helps digestion. Take another one, the kidneys. The kidneys are very important to control our blood pressure level. Three circuits are crucial in hypertension. They are namely the kidney circuits, the visceral circuits, and the skin. And in walking, all of these circuits are open properly instead of shut to force the blood into the muscles to beat this next person at this game of tennis or at this racquetball or to catch that next person in a race or all this kind of business. What am I saying? Competition, by its intrinsic nature and character, spoils the circulation instead of balancing it and blessing it. All right, what else does walking do? Walking is very good on the immune system. Now the immune system is quite delicate and I remember hearing in a private conversation just a few months ago with Dr. Benjamin Lau of Loma Linda University that when you take a low stress walk, the immune system is stronger. Whereas if you're under stressful competition, you see, or you're overdoing in your exercise, then the immune system is down instead of up. This is very important. And you heard me a few minutes ago mention that marathoners are vulnerable to infection for a couple weeks after a serious marathon. So that walking is a winner for the immune system. Another nice thing that the walking does is for the lungs. See, the most important um, muscle in breathing, of course, would be the diaphragm. And it's a beautiful arch. You see that depression? This depression anchors to the pericardial sac such that every time you take a good deep breath and lower the diaphragm, you give a nice gentle stretch to the heart. So what? Here's what. Frank Starling, Law of the Heart, says that within moderation, 
stretch strengthens the heart. So look, every time you take good moderate exercise, you are not only expanding the lungs, but you're giving a nice gentle stretch to the heart. Right here is where the liver is located, under the diaphragm on the right in normal people. The good news about that is this. Every time you take a deep breath, you massage the liver. And this helps the lymphatics of the internal organs. This helps the liver in its function. And it helps the venous return, you see, to get the blood. Now look at the sequence to get that blood back to the heart, clear from the feet. Muscle pump lifts the blood to the body. Good abdominal tone, you see, helps to get the blood up to the diaphragm. And then this good deep breathing helps aspirate the blood through the great vein called the inferior vena cava. Helps the blood back to the heart. So that exercise is a winner. It's moderate, it balances, it blesses every system of the body. And of course, when you give good deep breathing, particularly outside, a gymnasium will, will never do this one. Look, there's 10 times more electrified oxygen. I'm speaking of this. Negative charge, dot two. There's 10 times as much electrified oxygen out in nature, like I enjoyed this morning in a walk out in the countryside in Illinois. 10 times more of this outside than you get in a gymnasium. Uh, try this. Take a good walk and just stick your nose in a gymnasium. You know, the fellows playing basketball or whatnot. You'll notice that the isovaleric acid the, and other byproducts are so thick in the air, it doesn't even smell good. And kind of, another, even more serious, in the money pinch of modern educational budgets, a lot of high school and college and even university gyms are using unvented heaters, you see, to, uh, to heat their gyms. And this adds insult to injury. And it's a dangerous business because carbon monoxide from any unvented um, heat, like these kerosene heaters, do you remember hearing on the news the last two weeks that there have been numerous deaths in Canada and Maine from kerosene and unvented heaters, very dangerous. Don't use unvented heaters. Now, electric heaters, that's another matter. I'm talking about unvented kerosene and gas heaters. They're unphysiologic, unscientific, dangerous, and the very people that can ill afford for, to have this risk and this burden on their body and on their mitochondria. They're the people that are exposed to it. Okay, so when you're outside getting a good walk, you're getting God's electrified oxygen. And that is a winner when it comes to quality of sleep, reduction of pain, natural tranquilization, and the vigor and vitality of brain performance. This is a real nice um, combination. Another neat thing that walking does is this. Walking blesses the muscles. Inside the muscles, you have an, as well as all cells in the body, you have an energy factory. And these energy factories are called mitochondria. Under an electron microscope, they look something like this. They have special little partitions like this. I'll draw them a little thicker so that you can see them. 
They're called Christi in cellular biology. Okay, these mitochondria, they make ATP, which is the currency of energy in the body. And uh, from Keisling in Sweden uh, and others have confirmed this in man and in other animals. The good news is this. The brain, the muscles, and the heart itself will all increase number of mitochondria when you use them properly. So when you go on a good walking program, you can double these mitochondria, the actual number of them. And I would just like to point out, this is a very measurable and a very real thing. Sedentary college students have 2% of their muscle cross-sectional area is mitochondria. World-class athletes, 7% mitochondria in cross-sectional area. And what Keisling showed that he was able to double this, clear up to 4% in 29 weeks of serious exercise. All right. All right. Now, another thing. Old-fashioned exercise focused on one, muscles, two, heart, three, lungs. That's fine, but it's not near enough. The winning modern exercise focuses on the whole person. It wants to integrate the person, and not the least of which is the nervous system. So when you take a nice walk out on the countryside and you're looking for woodpeckers, you see, you're perhaps looking for Canadian geese, deer tracks, wrens. You're looking at nature. You're getting your mind off of modern stress and you're getting it onto the handwriting of the creator. This quality of exercise will unwind the autonomic nervous system so that instead of being wound up, you're unwound, you're unstressed, and you're ready to maximize digestion, maximize the quality of sleep and the quantity of sleep, and how fast you can go to sleep, and the depth of your sleep, so that you really feel better and are ready to live the abundant life. Now, what are we saying? We're saying that walking is the winner for the whole body, from the brain, heart, lungs, bones, kidneys, all parts of the body can be blessed by real exercise. Abundant living is an experience, not just a theory. Try it regularly. Every day of life is the way to win. <laughs>